Well, hello and welcome back to The Daily Brew, the devotional where every day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. And you join me here in Auckland, New Zealand on what is a very, very hot day. It is sweltering. But it is great to have you with me no matter where you are around the world, even you on the other side of the world in cold UK. Thank you for joining me today no matter where you are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube and all of our other platforms. It is great to have you here with me today for day 340 of day 365 days of Bible reading. And there's only 25 days to go until the end of our Bible reading plan. So make the most of every single day. Don't stop. Keep the grip. Keep on going and uh, see what God has to say to you. Now, we have also got, excuse me, I'm just choking over my own own spit, this ear infection, uh, which apparently, look, could have been too much information that I'm telling you about it. So apologies, uh, but it's still there. If uh, Arguably, it's worse than it was yesterday. So, uh, you know, I don't know how antibiotics work, but um, wouldn't it be awesome if you just took one of them and then just fixed it all? That would be fantastic. Anyway, that's my own problem. I'll deal with that in my own time but today let's have a look at what scriptures we're going to be reading in the descriptions on every platform proverbs chapter 29 verse 19 to 27 second john chapter 1 verse 1 to 13 and haggai a new book haggai hey guy um chapter 1 verse 1 to chapter 2 verse 23 those are our scriptures that threw me off just a little bit those are our scriptures for today make sure you check those out read them it is a bible reading plan make sure you do that okay here we are New brew time. Now, I ran out of Chemex filters the other day, uh, and I thought to myself, I've got to go buy some more. Obviously, we've got Daily Brew coming up, but also just love coffee generally. And went into All Press here in Auckland, uh, one of their stores in Ponsonby, and I saw not just the Chemex filters, but I also saw this coffee. This is their festive blend, which when I read the tasty notes, I was like, yes, please. Now, the tasty notes are rich chocolate, caramel and boozy cherries it's like an extra slice of dessert you know you'll make room for come on somebody that sounds absolutely delightful so today we're trying it in the chemex first then we'll try it in the plunger tomorrow in the espresso the next day but let's give this a go for today and see what it tastes like in the chemex i'm so excited let's see if it lives up to the hype let's go Mmm. Yeah, it doesn't taste like anything that the packet says. <laughs> that's a bit of a letdown, really. I'm going to be honest. That's a bit of a letdown. I thought that was going to be a little bit more poppy. I thought it was going to be a little bit more of a, a Shazam in your mouth. Five out of ten for the Chemex. Although the aftertaste lingers, and that's okay, but it would only lift it to a 5.5. Let's be generous, 5.5 and see what it tastes like tomorrow. That is it for the brews, the festive blend for all press in the Chemex. So far, so mediocre. Anyway, let's move on to the Bible, the reason that we are here. Okay, this is one of the monster passages uh, in Proverbs. Now, it's it's huge. It's also one of those ones that uh, I'm not super comfortable after reading. Why? Because of these three main topics. Don't speak before you think. Control your anger. And trusting God is the ultimate source of justice. Two of the three of those I find incredibly difficult, and I'll allow you to pick which one. I, if I'm honest, I I do struggle with some of these things. And in this passage of Scripture, there's a great weight that's given here to humility and ensuring that we live a life of humility. When we live a life of humility, we speak, we think before we speak, we control our anger, and we trust that God is the ultimate source of justice. It's actually the great theme of the book of Proverbs is humility. And I think it's a challenge for all of us to ensure that we live a life in godly humility. And ultimately, godly humility is trusting in God so that we live a life that's honorable and pleasing to Him. When we do, we see that our life reflects His character too. I've always been someone who shares the truth. This is like a very open and honest episode uh, or devotional today. Uh, At least I try and be truthful in a way that uh, doesn't hurt people, but often my brutal honesty, it does come across as quite hurtful. My thoughts have been as long as it's true, it's okay that it's ruthless. That's been sort of the way that I have looked at things. I valued probably the truth over like loving delivery. But 
the reality is, is that it's not really how it works in the kingdom. Truth without love is just hurtful. There is a way to communicate the truth without being a sad guy and breaking everybody you talk to. The other also can be true. You can hold back the truth because of quote unquote love and your love for people, but that's not loving either. We need to be able to share the truth out of love in a loving way without withholding truth. We need to be able to share the truth out of love in a loving way without holding, withholding truth. In this letter, we see that John goes straight for the jugular in truth, but also in love. This was important for him to share that they were both at play here. Both truth and love were at play here. The truth that he brings is heavy. There's false teaching uh, at play here, but it's because he loves them that he's willing to call it out without anger or shaming the woman who's bringing this false teaching. Then he goes on to urge them to love one another and walk in love together. This, where, this is where li liberal ideology starts to get a bit random. Quote unquote, love is love. And sure, to the degree that love is God and God is love, then sure, love is love. But let's be clear. What John is saying here is, guys, love one another and walk in love in the same way that God himself is love. Have standards for each other, champion each other, counsel each other, pray for each other and encourage one another, but walk together in love. Love is love is only accurate when we talk about how God himself is love. Truth and love are not opposed to each other. They actually build each other up. You need both truth and love. Can I encourage you today that you need both, whether it's a face-to-face -face or written comms or talking to your supervisor about a colleague. We need to make sure that we have truth and love at play at all times. Okay, it's time for a new book, the book of Haggai. Now, the prophet Haggai is the author of the book, and it was written in approximately 520 BC. The book is primarily four prophecies delivered within the space of four months, some 16 years after the return of of the first exiles to Jerusalem. The work on the second temple has begun in 536 BC after the exiles have arrived home. But after two years of working, all of the work had stopped. Haggai, who lived around the same time as Zechariah, challenged the people to wholeheartedly take up the task of rebuilding the house of God. Haggai is the first voice to be heard after the exile, and his name means my feast. His book is a collection of four brief messages written between August and December. Each of these messages are dated, and these dates, rather than the characters or places, dominate and determine the scenes. The central purpose of this book is that Haggai is determined to convince the people to rebuild the temple. And it isn't an easy task to move a discouraged nation to rise up and build the temple, but to many surprise, he did it. Three. Verse of the day. Verse of the day today is Haggai 1.14. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Jozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God. What is it that moves people? Is it vision? Partly. Is it clarity? Partly. Is it challenge? Partly. What moves people or what we see ultimately moves people is when the Lord stirs up the spirit of the people. This changes everything and gives us the ability to do what he has asked of us and achieve more than what we could on our own. But that is it for the Daily Brew today, day 340, done and dusted. Thank you so much for joining me today. No matter where you are around the world, I pray God is speaking to you. As you pick up the Bible and read it, I pray that you see more of God and more of yourself in between the pages of Scripture. Hey, a massive thank you to everybody on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all of our other audio-based platforms for rating the podcast and following along. And to you on YouTube as well, thank you for subscribing, especially if you like this devotional, subscribe so that you never miss a devotional upload. That is it, though, for today. If it's a start of your day, have a great rest of your day. Unless it's sleep time, good night, sleep tight, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for more Bible, more brews, and more banter here on The Daily Brew.